All right, there's one of them that's uh, shedding its skin, it's molting. This is the last molt uh, because the wings are fully developed now. So pretty soon it'll turn gray and crawl around and fly around and find troublesome insects and stick their snout in them and suck the juice out of them. Very beneficial. You can play with them, they won't hurt you. All right, now there's a bad one. That's called a Mexican bed bug. Down in Mexico, they're real bad. They live on blood, on human blood. And you find them around kennels and dog pens and places like that because they need blood to reproduce. And what they'll do, see the orange markings around them? That means caution. Those others had white, that's okay. That's how you tell the difference, really. And they don't have that big thing on the back. Well, we find them on our screen door. There's a, some people got a bunch of horses no, 100 yards from us, 150 yards from us. And those bugs hang around there. And they say, oh, here's a house where humans live. We can get a lot easier blood there. So they sit on our screens. And a lot of times, I'll watch the screen before I go in the house, and we'll find them sitting up there. What they do, they'll fly in your house, and they can tell where the bedroom is. It smells different to them. And they'll hide in the drapes or in the cover under the mattress or someplace and say after midnight or two o'clock in the morning when they know you're sound asleep, then they come out and they crawl around on you and they find a spot where a blood vessel is real close to the skin. I've had them to suck blood from me. It was from a blood vessel right here or right here. And you wake up in the morning with a great big whelp. It don't hurt, you never felt it, but it itches and itches. Well, if you find that, wash it real good before you, you scratch it. Because while she's there sucking your blood, she usually defeciates. And in her feces, she's, she carries that Chagas disease or sleeping sickness. Now, she doesn't give it to you when she sucks your blood, but if you scratch real hard and scratch that under your skin, then you can get that sleeping sickness. And there's no cure for it. Anyway, sleep tight. <laughs> Uh, the further south you go, the more common it is. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, I didn't want to hit that yet. That's uh, a beautiful gal, green lace wing fly, very beneficial. Uh, they're real beneficial in the larval stage, but in the adult stage, you just hang around, look pretty, and invite the males. That's about all they do. <laughs> Anyway, that's her egg cluster. Now, normally, she won't make an egg cluster like that. Usually, you will find these little cotton swab-like things here, there, and yonder, all through your garden or your fruit trees. However, if there's no troublesome insects for her larva to feed on, then she will put all of the eggs in one spot on little uh, stems like that. And when they hatch, they're running around looking for something to feed on. Well, if there's no other troublesome insects, or no troublesome insects around for them to feed on, they get hungry and then they turn cannibalistic. And uh, they, they don't kill all of each other, a few of the, the strong ones survive. So at least somebody survived from that egg mass. Now if they didn't do that, they would all die of starvation and then she wouldn't have any young continuing on. So nature seems to always make sure somebody survives so we'll always have the good bugs. That's the larval stage right there. That's what it looks like before it turns in that beautiful green fly. Now I watched, I watched one of these little guys go in. You saw that cluster of potato bee legs. I watched one of them attack a big cluster of potato bee legs and he, every one of them, I said, my gosh, his little belly's gonna pop. You know what he did? Went and got attacked another cluster of eggs and fed on them. They can, they can really eat. They're very beneficial. Once in a while you'd be sitting on a chair outside under a tree and want to fall on you and you feel a little bit of pinch and look at it. If you see that, just shake it off because it's tasting you is what it's doing but it won't hurt you. <laughs> okay, there's the aphids. These are the bad guys. The two in the middle are winged aphids. Uh, these aphids, now they're male and female. They will mate and fly off and find a plant somewhere where there's not a bunch of beneficial insects around, mostly a sick plant, and they'll lay thousands of eggs on it. And then those eggs hatch and see all those little aphids around it? They'll hatch and uh, 
most of those won't turn into winged adults like this though. Now I've been studying this and the aphids seem to be attracted to the sick, the weak, and the misfit, the unadapted. You hardly ever see them on a real healthy plant. They may get on a healthy plant during a cold spell or when there's not enough sunshine and that plant's resistance goes down. They may get on it real thick, but as soon as the sunlight comes out or the weather warms up, they disappear because the lady beetles move in on them and they eat them up in a hurry. Ball worked with us on a railroad. He had a plum tree about this tall and it was solid aphids. And he asked me what he could do about it. And I went over and looked at it and I said, man, right now, don't do anything. I said, those, uh, the lady beetles and those little wasps were just all over that tree. And within three days, there was not a troublesome aphid on that plant anywhere. That's how fast they can get rid of them. There's another species of aphids, cabbage aphids. They must be an aphid forever plant, the way it seems. <laughs> And if you look up in the right hand corner, you see that wasp? That's a little braconid wasp. Ordinarily her tail is up under her wings, but right now she, she found those aphids and she's going right down the row and deposited an egg in each aphid. Now she skipped the big one, I watched her. She did all the small ones because the big one, the skin may have been too tough or it would die of old age before her larva would have a chance to hatch and uh, pupate. So she picks out the small. And once these little wasps move in, they will clean up the aphids. Let me go back. You see right now, she's on the, the second aphid. Now she's on the third one. They just keep going. She skipped the big one. Oh, we call it a braconid. Don't ask me how to spell that. B-R-O-N, you know how? No? Okay. It don't care what we call it anyway or how we spell its name. <laughs> and uh, there's another, there's a little black one. Now you see these, let me get my pointer out. You see these aphids right here? You see that pretty little hole? One of these wasps had parasitized that aphid. It hatched into a wasp and then that wasp caught a perfect little hole, kicked the door open and flew out. I got more of those. This is a, a great big old leaf off of a squash, a yellow squash. One of my employees went to grow some yellow squash in the winter time on top of my fish tanks. And two leaves on this one plant was hanging down close to the water. And uh, they were old and kind of, you know, sick leaves. And the doggone aphids got on those two leaves and that's solid. Look at those aphids, solid. I broke one of those leaves off and I was carrying it outside then I noticed uh, some of those aphids have been parasitized and looked real close and I said, heck, I think they're all parasitized when they blow up like a little basketball and they turn a different color like that, that means they got a, a wasp egg in them. And you can see the little trap door where that kicked the door open and escaped. And uh, there's another one and there's a wasp on there somewhere but they blend in so well you can't find them. Anyway, there were two leaves, they were this big, covered with those. Okay, here's a close-up. See this aphid here has been parasitized. Now it's swollen up, it's not feeding anymore, and pretty soon there's going to be a little door cut open and a wasp will emerge from it. See this in here, I already cut the door open, that wasp is beginning to come out. This is one of them, the doors already fell off. These are real interesting. You go out with a magnifying glass in your garden and start studying the insects and it really gets interesting. One year, it was warm and sunny, early spring, a lot of weeds started growing, and then it turned cloudy and cold. Well, as soon as it turned cloudy and cold, it stressed the weeds. Well, as soon as the weeds became stressed, then the aphids moved in on them. That's their job, to take out sick, weak, misfit, stressed plants. Aphids don't bother perfectly healthy, well-growing plants. So nature put them here to get rid of those weak plants. See, only the healthy will survive. And I watched this. Boy, the aphids got real thick. It was cold and cloudy. All of a sudden, the sun came out. It warmed up. As soon as the sun came out, the lady beetles moved in. And within two days, there was not an aphid on that plant anywhere. Pretty unhealthy. Isn't that a beauty? <laughs> One of them can eat a whole tomato plant, run into tomato, eats it to 
It's made of hornworm. And uh, that's not its eye. That just makes you think he's looking at you. This whole thing here is really his eye. And that uh, can't hurt you. It's not a stinger. Can't hurt you in any way. And it turns into this. Or one of these, depends on what species it was.